My name is Shelley and welcome to this lesson on algebraic fractions. In the previous lesson we learned how to find the lowest common multiple of algebraic expressions. In this lesson we will learn how to find the lowest common multiple of algebraic expressions containing terms. By the end of this lesson you will be able to add and subtract algebraic fractions. Now that you know how to find the lowest common multiple of factors, what do you do when you get algebraic expressions containing terms? Well, you do the exact same thing we've been doing throughout the series. If you want to find the common factors, you need to factorize. Let me show you with an example. Find the lowest common multiple of a squared plus a minus 6 and a squared minus 9. Do you recognize these expressions? The first one is a quadratic trinomial. The second one is the difference of two squares. We need to find the lowest common multiple of these expressions. Now we know how to factorize from previous lessons, so I've gone ahead and factorized them for you. Here they are in their factorized form. Do you see that there are three different factors? And remember, to find the lowest common multiple, we must choose the highest power of each different factor. So we choose a plus 3 multiplied by a minus 2 multiplied by a minus 3. And this is our lowest common multiple. It is the smallest expression into which both expressions can divide. Now, with this in mind, let's move on to add fractions. Simplify a divided by 5 plus a divided by 3. Now, do you remember our example in the previous lesson? We also had fractions with denominators of 5 and 3. And we saw that the lowest common denominator was 15. Remember, we can only add fractions if we have the same denominator. In other words, fractions that are like. And that is why we need to find our lowest common denominator. This is what I want, 15 in both denominators. But I cannot merely change the denominators without doing the same to the numerators. So let's start. What did I do to 5 to give us 15? I multiplied it by 3. So we write... 5 multiplied by 3. Now we need to keep the numerator the same, so we multiply a by 3. Now we add. What did I do to the 3 to give me 15? I multiplied it by 5. So we've got 3 multiplied by 5. Now we do the same to the numerator, so we say a multiplied by 5. Now we just simplify that. The numerator will be 3a all divided by 15, plus 5a divided by 15. And now that we have like fractions, we can add, and we get 8a divided by 15. Now for another one. Here are the fractions. a divided by 2 minus 2 divided by a. Now what do we need to do here? We need to simplify. Well, look at the sign between them. It is a minus. So this is the subtraction of fractions. Whenever you think of addition and subtraction of fractions, we must always find the lowest common denominator. So how do we do this? We look at the denominators. Now what are the denominators here? We have a 2 and an a. To find the lowest common denominator, we need to find a number that they both divide into. And this one's easy. Our lowest common denominator is going to be 2a. We did not need to factorize. 
Now remember, we are going to change our denominators, so we need to change our numerators as well. Now, what did I do to the 2 to give me my lowest common denominator of 2a? Well, I multiplied it by a, so let's do that. 2 multiplied by a. Now we've got to do the same to the numerator, so we multiply our a by our a. Now we move on to our next fraction. What did I do to the a to give me my LCD of 2a? I multiplied it by 2. So we multiply our a by 2, which means we take our numerator and multiply it by 2. Now we can simplify. The denominator will be 2a, and our numerator will give us a squared. Minus, here our denominator is also 2a, and our numerator is 4. And now that we have like fractions, we can subtract our fractions. So our denominator is 2a, and we write a squared minus 4. Now you can factorize the numerator if you want, but you will not be able to simplify this fraction any further. So this is your final answer. Now let's go over what we've learned about adding and subtracting fractions. Remember, firstly, find the lowest common denominator. You may have to factorize first. Secondly, write each fraction with the new denominator. And thirdly, multiply the numerator by the same number by which you multiplied the denominator. Adding and subtracting fractions is easy. You just need to keep your cool. Now for practice, let's do one last example. Simplify 2 divided by a squared plus a minus 6 minus 3 divided by a squared minus 9. What needs to be done first? We are subtracting fractions, so we need to create like fractions. And that means we need to find a lowest common denominator. So we need to factorize our denominators. But you should notice from our first example that we've learned how to factorize these already. So let's write them down. We're going to write 2 divided by, put our two brackets down, and our factorization would be a plus 3, a minus 2, minus 3 divided by, a minus 3, a plus 3. Now we need to find our lowest common denominator. And our lowest common denominator is the expression that each of these individual denominators will be able to divide into. So our LCD would be a plus 3 multiplied by a minus 2 multiplied by a minus 3. Now we must remember to multiply the numerator by the same number or term that we multiplied our denominator by. Now what did I do to this denominator to give me my lowest common denominator? I multiplied it by a minus 3. So we need to do the same to both the numerator and the denominator. So we write 2 multiplied by a minus 3 and our denominator would be the same a plus 3 multiplied by a minus 2 and remember we're now writing multiplied by a minus 3. Now we move on to the next denominator. What did I do to this denominator to give me my lowest common denominator? I multiplied it by a minus 2. So let's fill that in. In our denominator we have a minus 3 multiplied by a plus 3 and now we're multiplying it by a minus 2. So we do the same to the numerator, which means we multiply our 3 by a minus 2. Because we have the same denominators, I can write one fraction. Now I had to start a new page, so I've written my last line out. So let's write out our denominator. Our denominator will be a plus 3 multiplied by a minus 2 multiplied by a minus 3. And our numerator will become 2 multiplied by a minus 3 minus 3 multiplied by a minus 2. 
Now, we can simplify our numerator, but watch out for the minus sign. So when we multiply it, we say 2 multiplied by a, and we get 2a. 2 multiplied by minus 3, we get minus 6. Minus 3 multiplied by a gives us minus 3a, and minus 3 multiplied by minus 2 gives us positive 6. And this is all divided by our denominator, which is a plus 3, multiplied by a minus 2, multiplied by a minus 3. Let's see what we can do now with this fraction. Well, the numerator can be simplified further. We can add our like terms. Now, minus 6 plus 6 cancels out and gives us 0, but 2a minus 3a gives us minus a. And that's all divided by our denominator, a plus 3 multiplied by a minus 2 multiplied by a minus 3. And that is our final answer. Now you need to do a task on your own. Simplify 3 divided by a squared plus a minus 4 divided by a minus 1 divided by a squared minus a. We have come to the end of another lesson on fractions. Now for adding and subtracting fractions, we still use our knowledge of factorization and we always need to find a lowest common denominator.